Welcome to leg three of the Ocean Race Europe. And as you can see, well, there's a little bit of wind and this may be as much wind as we have during this entire leg. The forecast is brutal. Frankly, there is very, very little wind in the entire Mediterranean basin and we are traversing, I think, the worst of it. Uh, the leg ahead is about uh, a little bit less than 600 miles uh, directly from well, we have a, a short course in the bay, but from Tabarca, just outside uh, of, the, of this bay here, directly to uh, Genoa. And um, I think that how we're going to get there is by, is by knitting, that's what the French call it. Uh, knitting little bits of uh, pockets of, of pressure, little bits of wind along the, uh, along the way. Uh, probably interspersed by brutal periods of just glassy calm seas and no wind and probably lots of hair pulling and frustration. Um, so that's the menu, wish us luck. Uh, I heard you, uh, your conversation with the local yeah. meteorologist, mm -hmm. does that make it a little bit easier or useful? Uh, yeah, that's nice. Uh, it, it was it was great to be joined uh, for for a, for a briefing by Gonzalo Infante. Uh, he's a local specialist and uh, a guy that I worked with in the Volvo Ocean Race when I was based uh, in the office building just over there, uh, where we uh, we worked together to sort of uh, unpack the story of of a race around the world. Here we have a race uh, which I think will be equally complex, uh, just getting across the Mediterranean. Um, and so Gonzalo lives on the other side of the bay here in a nice apartment building with a beautiful view out over the wind shifts. Uh, and I think that he's going to go home shortly, uh, brew himself a cup of coffee and watch the race start from his terrace. Uh, so I hope that we can do him proud. Um, could you tell us a little bit more about the challenges of light wind sailing? What does it mean for the crew and packing and sleeping? And yeah. Um, in, in many ways, the strong wind conditions sort of get all the glory because there's the, there's the spray and there's the drama and there's the incredibly uh, fast speeds. Uh, the winches are screaming and it's all very exciting. Um, but actually, the harder conditions to sail in are what we're going to have in this league when there's no wind. There, you're literally um, looking on the horizon with the, with the binoculars for any small puff of wind, uh, analyzing... Uh, all of the uh, all, all of the satellite photos and the weather models that I can possibly find just to find a couple more knots of pressure. Uh, when when you've got 30 knots, you don't need a couple knots of pressure. You've already got too much. Here we're looking just to get the boat powered up and going. Uh, I think that the crew is going to spend a lot of time right here at the front of the boat, uh, along with all of the weight that we possibly can. The reason we do that is that uh, basically the front of the boat is pointy, the back of the boat is flat and uh, that means that there is more drag on the back of the boat than at the front. Uh, and so if we can push down the front of the boat and lift up the back of the boat, uh, then that, that helps it accelerate in the, in the light winds. And what about daily life uh, challenges? Uh, well, daily life challenges, um, in many ways life is easier uh, because the boat will be uh, largely flat. Um, largely pretty pretty stable. There is, there's going to be no no real sea state to, to speak of. Um, uh, but we're going to have to be sort of walking like uh, like mice a little bit, not to upset um, uh, Rockus because he, he hates it when there's uh, sudden movements on the boat when the boat is uh, is moving very very quietly. Um, so I think that we're all going to be walking like ninjas for the next four days.